folks, take a look at this. This is what we in Texas call barbecue. This is a brisket that has been smoked for six and a half hours, finished up in an oven so it became beautiful and tender. Look at that beautiful red band around it. That means it's well smoked, okay? Give this a recipe a try. You're gonna love fixing your meat this way. Beautiful flavor. Hey, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. Hey guys, today we're gonna be discussing smoking meat. Now, this brings out flavors, unbelievable flavors. Barbecue is what we're gonna be making here. When you take a piece of meat and you bring it up in temperature slowly, you're using low heat like 200 to 250 degrees in that bracket. So you've got this low heat, you've got lots of smoke going on to create flavor. When you're cooking this way, what you're making is barbecue. Now barbecue isn't grilling. Barbecue is not a grill. <laughs> barbecue is meat that's prepared in this very special way. Let's take a look at all these goodies that I have here and let's make some real barbecue. <laughs> Now, these wonderful items I have sitting out here. I wanted to uh, do a full intro on all that we're going to be using here because this is simple. We have something that we're going to smoke. I've got a big old slab of beef. It's brisket, okay? Now, if you ever wanted to know what real Texas barbecue is, what really defines Texas barbecue, it would have to be the smoked brisket because, um, and, and, and let me we'll get into what the brisket is here in just a little bit but it's a cut of meat that lends itself to really long cooking and so it makes perfect barbecue because it allows the meat to stay in the smoke for many hours longer than most meats can be in there the uh, flavor that we're going to be using of course when you're making barbecue you're smoking and you're smoking using wood I go and purchase these chunks of wood they usually sell these things right next to where you find uh, the charcoal if you go to a supermarket, grocery store, you'll find these things. And uh, the ones I'm using are mesquite. If you want a distinctly Texas flavor, that's mesquite. And one of the reasons is, this is a weed tree, okay? That's what we call it. Uh, this tree has a bite that's far worse than its bark. It has thorns on it that are about two and a half to three inches long. They're woody, they're hard, and they will slice you open like a razor blade if you get near them. Taking out one of these trees is difficult and they, some people's land are just beat up with this stuff. It's all over Texas. It grows in areas where other trees simply don't grow. And thus, this has become one of the distinct flavors in Texas barbecue. It's not the only flavor. Some people like pecan. There's a lot of pecan trees in Texas, but that's more localized to East Texas. All of West Texas, bam, it's mesquite. Now for the fuel to fire this, we're going to be using an offset smoker and I'm going to be using charcoal. You can use regular wood logs if you want. I like charcoal because of the size of it. A small amount of this provides a lot of heat for a long period of time. This stuff has been prepared in such a way that it is uh, great when it comes as to a, a heat source. It doesn't take a lot of it, produces plenty of heat and it gives you the flavor that you're looking for. I'm using a mesquite barbecue, uh, or excuse me, a mesquite um, um, charcoal. If you get just plain ordinary charcoal, that's actually oak flavored. Um, they also have hickory flavored. There's a lot of different kinds of charcoal that are out there, applewood. All of them produce a distinct and wonderful flavor. However, today we're talking about Texas barbecue here. 
we're going to stick with a distinctly Texas flavor. We're going to go with that mesquite. The meat. The piece I have chosen here is uh, what they call Black Angus. Now, Black Angus, the only way you can get the name Black Angus on a package, like what you see here, Black Angus, is for that, that particular cow has to come up to a grade of choice or better in order to be called Black Angus. Select meat doesn't qualify for that label. So even though the cow may have been Black Angus, when they cut in between the 12th and 13th rib to, to grade the cow, that's how they do it. They look at how much fat's there. The USDA inspector will say, okay, this cow is uh, this grade. Uh, and he'll grade it as select choice or prime. When he does that, if it is select, it does not get to bear the name Black Angus, even though it came from that cow. Uh, it has to be choice or better. Now this one I've gotten is choice. We're looking at 14 and a half pounds of brisket here. So you'll know what a brisket is. Brisket is the pectoral muscle, essentially, of the cow. From his neck, the lower neck, wrapping down over his part of his chest, the upper part of his chest, is the cut called the brisket, okay? And that's what I have here. This came from right next to his front leg there. And uh, that's where that muscle rides. So that's what we're going to be cooking up. There's two of those per cow. Believe it or not, that's a big chunk of meat. Now, brisket, you might be thinking, wow, that's really fatty. Wow, that's really tough. And you're right. It's an extremely tough piece of meat. It's a very fatty cut of meat. And that's the advantage. In this particular type of cooking, when you're smoking, you want a piece of meat that can handle long cooking. Hey, you can leave a brisket under heat for 12 hours and it's still good and juicy. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is smoking this for oh, about six hours, maybe a little longer, but I'm looking for a deep penetration of smoke. I'm looking for my pink or red band. And what that is, when you see that on the outside of real barbecue, that band that, that, that soaks into that meat, what that is, that's the actual meat's real color. Red meat is red, okay? What happens is when you're burning wood, you're creating all this smoke, it releases nitrates, okay? That, the tannins in the wood burning, they release a lot of nitrates. Those nitrates act like preservative with a certain protein called myoglobin. Now, myoglobin is the protein in red meat that causes it to be red, okay? So what it's doing is it's acting as a preservative to the myoglobin. Uh, that's pretty neat to know, isn't it? And that's where you get that red band. We're looking for a good, deep red band on this, and the only way to get that is really low temperatures and a whole lot of smoke. The more smoke I can produce, the better the barbecue is going to be. I'm not in a rush to cook this thing. It can sit out there and smoke for many, many hours. If I wanted to smoke it, like I said before, for 12 hours, you can do that. Certain smokers that they make, and they're very expensive, they're rather large too, are designed to smoke meat overnight and those they're fantastic but what we're going to be doing is using an old-fashioned type of uh, smoker it's called an offset smoker now if you don't have one of these if all you have is a charcoal grill gas grill even there are ways of smoking on those okay you can still put your wood chips on a pan over a single burner in a gas grill and let those wood chips smolder in that pan while your meat sits off to the side. And the way you do that is you would use a pan like this. And you can put some pan racks in the bottom of it to bring the meat up, allowing smoke to get up underneath that pan. So you have a pan rack there, a couple of them. Put your meat right up on top of this. You can even put a little water in this and it's wonderful. It keeps the meat moister. It also allows smoke to penetrate all the way around. So you can do this on your gas grill. You can also use this same setup on a kettle grill that's round, you know, that, that uh, you can't normally smoke in because the fire's right under the meat. Do it this way, you can smoke, okay? It's all about being creative. But today we're using an old beat up offset smoker and you're gonna see some wonderful flavor 
come off of that beat up old grill. I've got two things to do. I've got a fire to start and we have a brisket to trim up a little bit. I want a lot of fat on this. I want all the surface fat, but I don't want it to be extreme. You know, if you get a brisket after it's cooked and it's got this big old thick chunk of fat hanging off of it, that's disgusting, okay? Now, some people that love fat, well, they'll chastise me for this, but guess what? Only a certain amount of that tallow can actually render through the meat, and I don't want any more on the outside of the meat than can evenly render through it in the amount of time I'm gonna be cooking. I want this meat done in eight hours. So we're starting this morning. This is for an evening meal. It's going to be delicious. Let's get on. Let's make some fire and trim a brisket. <laughs> okay, guys, we're out here with my smoker. There's plenty of background noise, but that's typical in Dallas. It's a typical Dallas morning at about 95 degrees. So it's hot. The lower box that you see here, this one here, this is what's called a fire box. That's where you want your heat to be where we're going to create all of the smoke. The smoke will then travel up into this larger box where it will surround the meat and produce a very good flavored food for us. What we want to use with that, right here we have our chimney starter. Do not use starter fluid. Do not use match light charcoal. It'll make your barbecue taste like kerosene. I mean, that's really gross too. Anytime I've ever tasted barbecue that was started with uh, uh, charcoal lighter, it, it tasted awful every single time. So what you want to do is light it naturally. And I have a chimney starter here. And in the bottom, I have some newspaper that's just wadded up and shoved in there. And I'm going to take my lighter and light it up. Here's another jet coming overhead. Good old Alice. Right here, this is a uh, pan that I have out here, not to put the meat on. I've got this pan out here for the sole purpose of putting water in, and I want to keep it down in the bottom of the smoker. And it's just going to gently release moisture into the air as I cook. It'll also catch drippings from the meat as well. Uh, if I want to save that tallow, I can, but in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so this will be put underneath the grate after I light my charcoal. So let's go ahead and get this lit up. Folks, this is truly the best way to light charcoal. It gives you better flavor. It's environmentally friendly. It works like a charm. All you have to do is just get that paper lit and it'll go from there. Now it's gonna produce a lot of smoke. What I'm looking for is for the top of the charcoal to start turning white. And when it does, I'm gonna dump it into my uh, firebox and we're going to get cooking. If you'll notice from the firebox down here there is a layer of old ash in there and I never remove all of my ash. That ash produces a wonderful insulation, helps to hold in a lot of heat and you get a, a better control on your heat this way. So it's good to keep some of the ash in there, not too much. About an inch to an inch and a half is a perfect little layer. It's getting kind of smoky. I'm gonna go inside. Okay guys, our charcoal is heating up. Let's go ahead and get this thing processed. Now, if you don't wanna use gloves, don't use gloves. I like this, and you might end up liking this if you try them. I like it because when I'm done, all I have to do is pull the gloves off and I'm right on to the next task. Now, the first thing I gotta remove this from its wrapper, and as I mentioned to you before, you don't get the word Angus unless it's at least choice or better. Okay, so, beautiful thing. Let me get this out of the package. Here it is, fat side up. Now, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of Texans and a lot of people who have cooked these things up that are gonna swear to you, never remove any of that fat. They'll say, keep every bit of it. Oh, it's gonna make that meat taste good. You know what, they're right. The fat's gonna make that meat taste really good, however, this big, thick clump of fat right here that's about an inch deep. Wow, I mean, there's a knife cut right there. Look at that. That's over a half inch deep and it's nothing but solid fat there. I want a layer of fat to render through the meat, but I don't want it to be ridiculous. So a big chunk like this, simply unneeded. If you're gonna make a cut like this, 
remember, watch out for that blade. Mm -hmm. Push this board around a little. One of the reasons I'm doing this, so you'll understand why I'm removing what some would call flavor. Um, I want, remember we were talking about how the uh, nitrates and the smoke react with the meat. Well, they react with the meat because the smoke comes in contact with it. If you don't get good contact with your smoke, well, you're not going to get that smoky flavor. Now, I don't want fat that's flavored like smoke frankly. There's the end of my meat. I do not want fa a flavored fat, plain and simple. There's some connective tissue. That sucker can just come right off of there. More like gristle than anything. Anything hanging loose like this, get rid of it guys. Come on, really. Now if you'll notice, when I'm carving something like this, see how I'm choked up on that knife? Choke up on it tight. Get a good grip on it. Pinch the blade so you get better roll control. You don't want your fingers too close to something like that. I'm going to rotate this around. This is a good example of why big cutting boards are nice. The reason the packer Left that much fat on there because they wanted to be able to charge those that they shipped it to as much money as possible. And if they can get a couple of extra pounds of fat in there, well, heck, that's what they're going to do. And that's okay. I'm all right with that. It's just part of the industry and I get it. Remember, one of the things that grades beef, in fact, it's the primary grading uh, criteria between select choice and prime is how much what they call intermuscular fat is within the meat itself and that is the fat that runs in between the grains of meat the more intermuscular fat that the meat has the more tender it's going to be plain and simple also and the reason is is fat is an acid and as fat renders out and melts into the meat well, then it tenderizes it at the same time. That's a, a slow acid re, uh, response. Fat is not a strong acid. It doesn't uh, break down meat quickly, but it will break it down as it renders in heat. There we go. Just a little more off of this. Remember, I want a layer to render through, and it only takes roughly 3 eighths of an inch, and that is for all day cooking, okay? Any more than that, you're just going to have thick globs of fat on your meat, and it's going to be really disgusting. I hate when I'm served a piece of brisket, and it is a big old thick mound of fat on one edge. <laughs> it's so disgusting. And I think, really? really, That's the best you could do? Really? You see how I have this layer of fat up here, and this is that that real thick hard fat that adds super flavor. Um, I have that down nice and thin just like this over here is, okay? This has a lot of connective tissue with it like I mentioned earlier. And here's a tip that has very little fat, but believe it or not, what's gonna render and flow down this is gonna keep that open meat perfect. It's gonna be funny how it works, but it will. When I say it's gonna flow down from this, that's right, we're putting this side up. Why? Well, that's easy. We want the fat to flow through the meat. It can't do that from the bottom. Let's turn this over. Wow. And we have a couple of more heavy areas of fat to cover. One here and one here. So let's take care of this little guy first. This is probably the hardest one to get to. A smaller knife is sometimes more comfortable. There we go, isn't that nice? So, so far you've seen me remove this huge amount of fat. And 
Okay, now I need to take this one out up here. And this is more of that real hard fat that contains a lot of the uh, saturated fats. The tallow itself is uh, heavy in that. So if you want to save this fat and put it in a pot and cook it, put it in the oven at about uh, 250 to 275 degrees, what that fat's going to do is it's going to slowly render out. Then you take your pot, bring it down in temperature, pour it into a bowl, put it in your refrigerator, and you will find good clear tallow on top of that after it chills. That is uh, good for cooking with, making all kinds of stuff with. A little bit of old-fashioned wisdom going on right there. Right here. Looks like some cartilage there. I'm going to slice right through that. <laughs> now, looks beautiful. Good band of fat for my edge. Thick enough for the meat on top there. This is the bottom right here. I just need to get this on the grill. A big old honking cow pectoral muscle. <laughs> okay, now I have placed all of my wood in warm water and I'm soaking it. Every once in a while it doesn't hurt to turn it. Just bring some of the bottom pieces up and push what was on top down. You get good even saturation. Now don't worry about this putting your fire out. We don't actually put these directly on top of our uh, charcoal briquettes. We put these around the edges of the bricks, okay? So that's the way we handle those. Okay, as you can see from the top of our charcoal, it's starting to ash over and that's just perfect. Down in the middle of that, it is red hot. It's fiery. Now I'm gonna fill up my, uh, my fire box with my preheated charcoal here. Watch out, this can burn you. There we go. Set this down here to cool off. I want to add some more charcoal on top of that. There we go. Something that you're going to need while you're out here are some tongs. That way you can reach down in your fire pit and work. Now you're going to want extra long tong too. All right, now I'm going to take some of the wood that I have in my water. Remember that? We're going to place it around the sides, not directly on the fire. And it'll sit there and smolder and produce wonderful smoke for us. For prepping the rest of this, remember we needed to put that broiler pan in the bottom. I have a bit of a mess right here. And that's from the uh, ash of the paper. If that bothers you, I'm gonna show you how you can wash it off. Because remember, we had to put a pan in the bottom of this and we need to put water in it. There we go. Sucker's just a little bit warm. Okay. Pan in the bottom, right in the center. Go ahead and put your grate back on. And remember we needed to fill that pan. This is where you get to wash off that grate. There you go. Meat, fat side up. Big side towards the heat. All right, our grill is set up our smoker set up rather, ready to go. We're gonna have some great barbecue in a little while. Now when you're doing this, on your chimney up above, keep it wide open at all times, all right? Keep your firebox lid closed, and on the side, there's an air damper. Open that up, and I'm gonna open the door just a little bit. My model works better when I keep that about an inch open. Each one of these has their own little quirks. You just gotta figure out yours. What I'm looking for on that little temperature gauge down there, we're looking for 
this temperature right in here, 200 degrees is perfect. It's smack dead on where you want it to be. You notice this up here says barbecue? Well, when you're finishing it off, yeah, you're gonna wanna get it up in here. We're getting good smoke. You don't want that plume to get thick and you don't want it to turn blue. If it does, then you're gonna have a problem because you've got too much heat in your box. Keep the heat down. Now guys, this is really simple. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting, okay? We're smoking meat, okay? We're not frying, we're not broiling, we're not baking, we're smoking, all right? The idea here is incorporating flavor and we wanna get as much flavor as possible down in that meat. And that can only be achieved by leaving it in the smoke a long period of time. So for me on this one, this is gonna be a six hour smoke. And then I'm gonna take that brisket and we're gonna put it in the oven about 300 to 325 degrees and let it slowly finish off until it becomes absolutely falling apart tender. At that point, it's ready to eat and it is delicious, okay? Now, I could finish it off up there, uh, excuse me, finish it out there by just adding a whole lot of charcoal and bringing up the temperature in that smoker. But that's, I don't really like doing it that way. I find I get a moister product when I finish it in the oven. I've done it both ways. I just get better moisture when I finish it in that oven. So that's what I want to do. Now, every 30 minutes, go out and check that fire as you need it. Uh, you might need to add some wood. You might need to add some charcoal. The charcoal, remember, you're using that for heat. So keep plenty in there so that it keeps producing good heat. You want to keep it right about 200 degrees. Also, keep yourself plenty of the wood soaking. And any time that it starts uh, or stops putting out good smoke, go down there, add a little more wood around the perimeter and just keep that thing billowing a nice steady stream of smoke. Once every 30 minutes, check that fire. Now guys, I just pulled this brisket in from the uh, smoker. It has been out there smoking for six and a half hours. Now, I wanted to show you, look at the red on this. Remember when I was telling you how those nitrates are going to preserve the color of the meat, keeping it red. Let me open up a spot over here. This is where it's thin. And I wanted to do it right here, you know, because it's it should be the most cooked spot on the meat, right? It's the thinnest spot. It's been out there in 200 degrees for six and a half hours, folks. Now look, look inside of this. You see how that is pink looking here? kind of red, almost like it's raw. It's not raw, believe me, this is cooked. This is quite cooked. I'm about to finish tenderizing it up in the oven. It's only going to take another hour and a half, maybe at the most two hours. It's going to come out so tender and soft. Before I put it in that oven, I want to add a little water in my pan. Now this is going to provide some moisture as it's cooking. The higher temperature, we may end up having a little bit, oh, um, a little bit of problem with some of that pink or that red color starting to uh, wash down, or, or we we can call it oxidize. It'll turn brown. Anyway, let's bring that up again. See what I'm talking about? You see that red color inside of it? Isn't that unbelievable? All day long. That's that, uh, the effect of the smoke on the meat. Meat's cooked, it's delicious, and it's tender. But it just needs a little more finishing off to make it falling apart tender, which is what I like, and to also create a wonderful au jus down here in the pan. Some of that fat's gonna drip down in there, and I'm not gonna leave it with this side up. I'm about to turn it over again with that fat side up again, you can see the marks where this was sitting on the grill grate. And uh, that's gonna be perfectly fine. The uh, fat can finish rendering, flavoring more of the meat, and also giving a wonderful flavor of au jus in here. It's gonna be a flavor of beef fat, beef, and the smoke, and it's a good taste. Now I have flipped that roast over. Look, even the fat side is beautiful.
This doesn't have to be perfectly sealed. Just a good snug fit. That was noisy. Down in the oven, 325 degrees. We're gonna give it a couple hours in there. Hopefully a little less, but we'll see. When it comes out fork tender, when I can put a fork in it, and the fork slides out easily without the meat clinging, then we're ready. Well guys, this was just pulled out of the oven, and it has been almost 10 hours of cooking total. Six and a half on the smoke, and the rest of that time was in the oven. Now, I was wanting fork tender. Look at that. Now that fork slides out easy. Easy peasy. A little bit firmer there, but that's normal in that spot. Look at that. That's wonderful. Okay, so this is ready. All I have to do is give it some time to rest for those juices to pull back in. I've got a wonderful au jus in the bottom of the pan there. And I tell you what, guys, this, this right here, is absolutely delicious. Wait till you see this thing cut open. <laughs> it's beautiful. We have our beef pulled out of the pan. I was getting ready to carve it. Let's take a good close look at this. I do want, before I go cutting into this, I want to get a good close up shot of what we're about to carve here. Now the meat grain kind of runs this way, all right? I'm going to start at this tip here. That's just flat beautiful right there, folks. Mm. Look at that beautiful pink band all the way around the absolute mark of a beautiful perfectly cooked brisket beautiful absolutely beautiful well it was a day of lots of smoke look at the beautiful red band on that just the way it should be distinct red that means that this look at that I don't know why I bothered with that Mm. Oh man. Mm. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh. Smoky flavor. Beefy. The characteristics of this are unbelievable. And you just can't understand it until you've actually done one. So please, pick yourself up a brisket, try making some Texas barbecue, find out what it's all about for yourself. This, I don't need barbecue sauce on, not at all. I'll enjoy a little of the au jus that comes with it. That's all I need. <laughs> hey guys, thank you very much for watching this episode of Texas Cooking Today. And thank you to my subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, well please do. And one other favor, please, share my videos. You folks, you have a good day. Hey guys, thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today. Do appreciate it. If you would, please subscribe. If you like this, just click like down there. And if you would, I would really appreciate it if you add me to your favorites. Thank you.